your Bible tonight very quickly. I'm not going to uh, tarry along. Just want to give you a truth and lay it out there and let you mill around with it just a little bit. Proverbs, in the book of Proverbs, chapter 27. Proverbs, chapter number 27. Most my wife has a new boyfriend tonight. Looks to me like a little sucker. I'm not too sure. <laughs> Let me read for you just a verse. Help you a little bit. Let me show you maybe a, a, a truth tonight. Verse 8 in your Bible, if you would please. Proverbs chapter 27, verse 8. This verse has no age limit. This verse has no race limit. This verse has no political limit. The Bible said, as a bird that wandereth from her nest, so is a man that wandereth from his place. Think about that a little bit, if you would please. As a bird wandereth from her nest, so is a man that wandereth from his place. The wise man is issuing to us and to all of humanity a warning. Don't be careless with your lifestyle. As a bird wanders from her nest, so is a man that wandereth from his place. Who better to write us this warning than the man who had 700 wives and 300 concubines and 1,000 mother-in-laws? Who better to warn us, to caution us tonight about our ability and our desire to wander from where God wants us to be. Deep down in the recesses of the human heart is deceitfulness beyond all description. Amen. Deep down in my heart, in your heart tonight, is the capability of wickedness beyond any of us being able to explain. Amen. Jeremiah said the heart is deceitful and desperately wicked who can know it. And tonight the wise man, the wise man of all wise men, warns us concerning wandering. He's the, wonder, he's the one who wandered away from God to try out the joys of women. He's the one who decided that it would probably be more fun to try out a little wine and the world and the world's philosophy to make himself happy. But then he closed out the book in which we refer to Ecclesiastes and said, now this is the duty of man. Fear God and keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of man. All of us are prone to wonder. All of us is prone to get kind of sidetracked occasionally. To wander is to stray from the straight and narrow. To wander is to live a lie all the while thinking everybody thinks you're living the truth. To wander is to stray. To wander is to be unstable in all of our ways. To wonder is to be discontent with what God has given us and we on our own begin to reach out and grab those things that we think is entertaining and fulfilling. But oh, how we must be careful. The wise man, after he tried it all, had the wherewithal to try it all. He went from everything you can imagine, from, from 
entrepreneurship to uh, uh, drunkenness to adultery to fornication and he came up with an empty bucket and said now here is the duty of man keep his commandments oh how we need to heed the story tonight I think America has wondered a dab to wonder is to have no fixed course in your life here and there and everywhere trying to fulfill this longing, this desire to be happy and fulfilled. To wonder is to be out of control. To wonder is to be human. I think the songwriter Chris Rice said it the best that I know of and it says, oh, to grace, how great a debtor. Daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy goodness like a fetter bind my wandering heart to thee. He said, I'm prone to wonder. Lord, I feel it. Prone are we not to leave the God we love. She cries out, take my heart, dear God, and seal it for thy courts above. I wonder, are you in your place? Not your neighbor's place. Are you in your place? Because our place is God's place. And if you're not in God's place, then you're out of place. And you will never be happy out of place. Amen. There'll always be a hitch in your walk. There'll always be a hitch in your talk. There'll always be a hitch, bless your heart, in whatever you're trying to do. Because God's place is your place. I read the other day in the book of 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 18. But now God has set the members, every one of them, in the body as it has pleased him. You see, I come to the conclusion yesterday that all creation is to please the creator. God did not create us to do our own thing. God created us to do his thing. I believe with all of my heart, maybe children are to obey their father. I know my father had the idea that I ought to obey him. And it was never brought up in a business meeting around the dinner table. Oh, gee, would you like a vote? He'd show me that belt of his and he'd say, now, are you prone to wonder? And Lord, did I feel it? <laughs> Is anybody here, amen? amen? Why should God let us get away with wondering? But the price he paid, the sacrifice that he made, the love that he showed, why should God allow us to wonder? from the place which is his place. Are you listening tonight? Amen. Examples I would bring your mind to in the book of Genesis chapter 18 when God was looking for Abraham. He went to the plains of memory, did he not? When he was looking to forecast to Abraham who now is 100 years old and his wife 90 her hiding in the tent when he, God was looking for Abraham. Are you glad that Abraham was in the right place? I said, are you glad he was in the right place? Because Abraham being in the right place was dependent upon all the rest of the Bible falling in place for you and I. And when the Lord left Abraham, the Bible says, and Abraham returned to his place. Where's your place? What are you doing in your place? 
Is your place uh, an important place? As a bird that wandereth from its nest, so is a man that wandereth from his place. In Genesis chapter 37 through 47, Joseph was a man who had to be in the right place at the right time. Whether it be in the pit, whether it be in prison, or whether it be in the palace, Josh, John, John, what is, who is it? Joseph. <laughs> I do. I get all them Joes mixed up, you know. <laughs> Leroy and Abernathy. But Joseph was in the right place. And he not being in the right place would determine the history of the nation of Israel, which would determine the coming of our Lord, which would determine our Bible, and which would determine whether you saved or not. Are you in God's place, which is your place? Could I help you a little bit tonight? I just believe with all my heart, if you look back, Genesis chapter number 50 and verse 15, and Joseph said unto his brothers, Fear not, for I'm in the place of God. You know why you don't have to worry about me being in another church next week? Because this is my place. You know why you don't have to worry about me shacking up with somebody else's wife next week? Because my wife's got a gun. <laughs> and she knows how to use it. Besides that, I've got kids that'd kill me. Deacons would kill me. Church members would kill me. That's a good reason for staying in your place. Can you say amen? amen. I said, can you say amen? amen? Bless your heart, I want to help you tonight. You say, well, I'm going to get mad. Well, that's good. We'll talk about your place. <laughs> Philip was having a great revival. And God said to Philip, Philip, I want you to change. You're in the wrong place. I want you to go south, south of Jerusalem, down the road, the way toward Gaza. I've got a place I'd like for you to be. And by the way, I've already got somebody in the place waiting for you. What if Philip had have said, no, thank you, I'm staying home tonight. That Ethiopian eunuch could be on its way to hell tonight. And because Stephen was willing to go to God's place at God's time and do God's thing, then the gospel was carried to Africa. And God only knows how many churches were started by an Ethiopian eunuch sitting in a chariot reading the book of Isaiah chapter 53 all because there was somebody who said, I will be in my place come hell or high water. Amen. Amen. I thought this would be better than it really is. In Acts chapter 2 and verse 1, this will help you. The early church members was in their place. The Bible said that when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. You know, as a Christian, where you ought to be on Sunday morning at 10 o'clock? In your place. Not your house, your place. You know where ought to be? 630? Your place. You know where I'll be on Wednesday? Your place. You say, why? Because it's your place. Bless your heart. I want to help you a little bit now tonight. Just a minute. Just a minute. In the book of Proverbs chapter 27, now learn something if you would please. Chapter 27, verse 8. Everybody in the plan of God has a place. I don't know, if you, I don't know about you, but that kind of makes this thing kind of special to me. But I'm afraid that like the verse says, that many have wandered from their place. Now, I'm just a young lad in relation to a lot of you folk. I haven't been around long. But I have seen society and the culture in America drift. And she's not finished drifting. And for you to fit in, 
And for me to fit in, we got to wander with it. We've got to drift with it to be politically correct. America has drifted domestically. You, you don't know whether to pucker or shake hands with some men. You don't know if they're going to kiss you or hit you. Domestically, we're drifting. Marriage used to mean something. Preachers used to preach on marriage, being respectful, undefiled, but no longer do they do that anymore because fornication and adultery is just a small thing compared to sex change and weirdos and whatever they're trying to be, transgenders. I'll tell you, I used to have dogs that had more morals than most people today. Now, you're either going to stand for right or stand for this book or you're going to wonder. You're going to drift with the tide and you're going to get mad at me when I preach like this and I will take a baby aspirin to get over it when I get home. But as a bird that wandered from his nest, so a man who wanders from his place. Men used to be men. Women used to be women. Kids used to be kids. Now the kids are parents and the parents are kids. We're, we're, we're wandering domestically. We're wandering culturally. We used to be a Christian nation. Now we have no idea what kind of nation we have. You know, we used to be a Christian, God-loving country. We used to have morals. People used to pay their bills. My father needed no contract. All you had to do is shake my daddy's hand and that was better than any contract you'll ever have. And he'd do what he said. When he said he'd do it, he'd do it. And God help us tonight. We've drifted. Christians are drifting from being morally correct and theologically straight and just plain old good people, bless your heart. We've drifted, bless your heart. We've drifted spiritually and politically and educationally, if you could read what I read each week about what they're slipping into our schools, uh, sex education and with uh, transgenderism and, and uh, gays and lesbians, if you knew what they're teaching your kids, probably wouldn't bother you much because we've wandered that far. I'm just kind of concerned about which way we're going. And I believe if I read my Bible correctly, the creator of this world had a plan and a place for all his creation. Have you ever noticed that fish do a lot better in water than they do on the land? Have you noticed that? Have you noticed that birds do a little bit better in the air than they do in the water? Now, why is that? Have you noticed that animals do a lot better on dry land than they do in the Pacific Ocean? Why is that? Have you noticed that Christians do a lot better in fellowship with the, faith, with the Father than they do with the devil? Have you noticed that Christians do a lot better if they're in church than making an excuse why they're not in church? Have you noticed that? Do you think maybe God might have a plan? 
Do you think maybe God might have a plan? Do you think maybe we ought to be teaching this plan to our children? Here's what I'd like to teach my children. That God's place is a place of protection. Hmm? I tell you, do whatever you want. But my daddy can whoop your daddy. Gene and David came home one day and told me when I was passing up Fort Worth. I said, Daddy, we got great, great confidence in you. I said, what do you mean? He said, well, we've been telling a little boy down the street that my dad or you can whoop their dad. I said, how big is their dad? <laughs> so I said, boys, let's get in the car. We'll drive down the street and we'll not act like we're looking. And we drove by and I saw that guy, those kids' dad, and I encouraged my kids to tell them that their dad could whip their mother. <laughs> I do not have to bow down to the devil, his imps, or his crowd. Because my dad, my place, his place is a place of protection. He said, hey, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. <laughs> you remember what he said? I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, hmm, they protect me. Ah. Would you trade God's protection for a little worldly pleasure? For eight minutes worth of flesh? As a bird that wandereth, so is a man who wanders from his place. Thank God for a place. Thank God for a place. God's place is a place of provision. <laughs> Everybody, well, the preacher's rich. I'm rich in looks. That's it. A lot of you folk don't remember the vehicles we drove when we started. A lot of you folk don't remember the frame house with no closet, with no heat. A lot of folk don't remember that. But I'm a standing living testimony that God's place is a place of protection. Boy, how many folks have tried to nail my eye to the wall? How many folks have tried to get me in trouble with the law? How many folks have had friendly policemen trying to nail my hide for something? Thank God God's place is a place of protection. Amen. And it's also a place of provision. Amen. amen. I said amen. amen. See, you haven't sat in the offices back there when Mary Thorns would walk into my office. And I'm not talking about just a tear or two. I'm talking about audibly crying because there's not enough money to go around down to school. And preacher, I need four or five thousand dollars this week to pay to pay the teachers. You've not sat in the office and seen Miss Ginger nervous about being able to make that four thousand dollar a week building payment. And you say, Well, preacher, I just am a living testimony that God has a place, and that place is a place of protection. And that place is a place of provision. Thank God how he's taken care of our family over the many, many years. Amen. Thank God how he's taking care of our church when we're struggling and trying to make the payment on this building while we're going to church in that little building. Thank God when our building payment jumped from $2,500 a month to over $4,000 a week and we were in the little building and my wife would come with tears in her eyes and worried to death. Thank God he had a place and that place is a place of provision. Thank God he's been good to us. But oh, how many we've seen wonder. How many we've seen drift away. The wise man has tried to warn you and I tonight, trying to warn our young folk tonight. 
the danger of getting wrapped up in this world. Have you ever thought of Lot? Just looked. Just listened. Just lingered. Started moving a little bit at a time towards Sodom till he found himself in a cave committed incest with his own daughters in a drunkard stupor. Drifting don't just stop when it's convenient because the devil is out to destroy not just them all, but to destroy all of us who wanders from the place of protection, the place of provision. And God's place is a place of possibilities. I don't think you really realize how great a God that you serve. I don't think, I think maybe we forgot a little bit about how good God has been to us. God's place is a place of possibilities. You ever heard of a Brian Cohn? A Jamie Cohn? Have you ever heard, have you, have, you, have you forgotten what God does with the most insignificant people in a most wonderful way? Hmm? Do you know somebody picked up a James Scott on a bus route? You know, somebody had to put up with them stinking, disrespectful, rude, little animals we call bus kids. Somebody had to love them. Did they not? Amen. Have you looked at anybody lately and seen a possibility instead of a problem? A possibility. A Garrett Ringo. In spite of his daddy. <laughs> Thank God for a good mother, right? Yep. The best place that you and I can be tonight is not on the lake. The best place we can be tonight is right in the middle where God wants us. Because that's a place of protection. That's a place of provision. That's a place of possibilities. Can you say amen? Yes, this morning, I tried to get Brother Tracy to give me some of the donuts he has eaten for the bus route. And he was stingy and wouldn't let me have them. Kind of missed in rain. And, and he said, Preacher, I'm going to go up to the auto store and get some windshield wipers for my bus. I thought to myself, as dry as it been, why would we need windshield wipers? You probably need a rag to wipe the dust. And I said, Tracy, let me buy those, those. Here's a credit card. It's got ginger on it, but they'll take it. <laughs> and Brother Tracy said, can I buy windshield wipers for all the buses? I said, my wife won't mind at all. Just get them all while you're getting them. possibility I can put windshield wipers on a bus Tracy said maybe a boy or a girl ride that bus maybe that's a possibility but make an impression on a young boy or young girl there's one thing I know God has a place for every one of us you're not an accident God didn't just throw you together with spare parts and throw you down here and say, well, I'll make out the best way you can. You find your place. You stay in your place. You do what God wants you to do in your place. 
You accomplish the task that God wants you to accomplish in your place. And that way, somebody else can do what needs to be done in their place. Is anybody listening? Now I want to close, but I'm not going to. I just said I wanted to. I'm going to. Now get this. Only in your place is your worth realized. What good is an ice maker in the Arctic? How many tanning booths do you think you can sell in the desert? How many mechanics do you want to do brain surgery on you? Oh, you say, preacher, that's crazy. Really. I'm reading for you out of the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I knew there's something wrong. Somebody didn't pay the light bill, wife. Well, I'm going to have to preach shorter now. I can't find 1 Corinthians. I want you to think about this now. Only in my place is my worth realized. Only in my place is my worth realized. To wonder from my place is to become fruitless, useless, and worthless to God. Let that sink in a little bit. In the book of 1 Corinthians 12, I'm closing. Watch this. I'll be closed by time half past the hour. I want, you to, I want you to watch this now, if you would, please. Then I want to ask you a question. I want you to look at verse 12. Would you please look at your Bible, verse 12, 1 Corinthians 12. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 12. The Bible says, For as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. Verse 14. For the body is not one member, but many. Verse 18. But now hath God set the members, every one of them, in the body as it has pleased him. If you had been in the committee meeting when God designed this body, would you have had any suggestions on what to do with the members in the body? Did God know what he is doing when he put the members together in this body? You say, well, I don't think your body's such a good-looking body. Me neither, but I don't see one I'd trade it for. <laughs> now, keep, keep your thought now. Every member has a place and a performance. Amen. And he compares the body to the local New Testament church. And just like this body has many members and it's one body, so also is the body of Christ made up of every member and yet one body. Is that about right? Amen. Verse 27, the Bible says this, Now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. Is that what it says? 
to wonder from our place is to neglect our performance is to only handicap the body. What do they call a body with one leg gone? Handicapped. What do they call a body with a finger gone? A fingerless hand. Handicapped. What does God call the local church, the body, with displaced members? You say, oh, I'm not hurting anything. Yes, you are. You are handicapping the greatest institution on the face of this earth. You are a cog in the wheels of the gospel. Well, I'd like to know what's wrong with the church. You and I is what's wrong with the church. We have drifted from the place which God wants us to serve and wants us to honor him and begin to justify our absenteeism because it's not politically correct to go to church three times a week anymore. Culture has changed. There's too much to do. Too many things to Too many places to go. I've got to run here and run there and run there. I can't understand. We've got so many automatic devices and we still don't have time to do anything. Now the problem is the place. The problem is we've got a bunch of birds that's left the nest and they just come back when they want to. Are you here? Amen. You say, well, preacher, I, I'm not so sure I agree with you. I'm not so sure I agree with myself, but it's the truth. Does the place of the member really matter? Is that right hand really that important? The members that you don't see, the kidney, the heart, the liver, the intestines. Well, they don't have to show up after all. You can't see them. Is anybody here? I'm just saying tonight that maybe... It really does matter where you are when church takes place. You say, well, I don't vote on anything. You vote every time you come. You vote on keeping the doors open. You vote on the gospel. You vote on God being King of kings and Lord of lords. You tell the devil to go to hell where he came from. Every time you come, every time you show up, every time you're in your place, you're telling the devil, look, you're not, you can't have me. You can't have my kids. May I say to you, does it matter? Let me show you. Let me, I just, this morning I was watching uh, Thomas. Thomas is learning to walk. And he, I'd sit over here and he kind of wobbly. If he gets started on the wrong foot, if he heads that direction, gets started on the wrong foot, he'll end up over in that direction. They ain't what they need to be. Those are members in Thomas's life. These things are not what they need to be. But now listen to me. Don't, don't, don't miss this. With practice and exercise, they mature in the legs that do jumping jacks. <laughs> 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 
You see what I mean? I, I said, you see what I mean? You mature and you grow as a member as you exercise. These used to be weapons of mass destruction. <laughs> what are you doing, Sean? Sean trying his best to keep him giggling. Your job's not on line over that, John. <laughs> but now it hurts to even wad them up. <laughs> but they're still in God's place. And they're still at God's pleasing. And they're still at God's pace. I know this, only in God's place is my worth realized. Amen? Amen. Now I want to just close. I'm humbled beyond all imagination that back yonder in a holler in Tennessee, to a poor, hard rock farming family. God would have a place so significant, so life changed to just a country boy who failed high school, or kicked out for painting a hog the wrong color in the FFA class, was in jail during graduation practice that God in his grace and his love would have a place just for me. How humbling and how rewarding it is that somebody so unlikely to succeed, so unintelligent, so handicapped, that you might be one of his legacies. That's humbling to me, that God would have a place just for me. Me. And he has one just for you. It may not be a comfortable place. I don't think the Hebrew children thought that was a comfortable place. It may not be a convenient place but neither was it comfortable for Dan and the, Daniel in the lion's den. It may be not a financially rewarding place. Jesus said, the birds of the air have nests, but I have no place to lay my head. But I'll tell you this, it will be the most rewarding place you've ever been in all your life. Amen. Amen. I said, amen. amen. Question I would ask you tonight. Are you in your place? Because that's the place where our worth is realized. Now, this is my last point. You'll need to write it down. It's kind of like the combination on the gate out the farm. Here it is. Don't miss this. Find your place now. Amen? Just find your place. Wherefore be not unwise, the Bible said, understanding what the will of the Lord is. Psalms 143, teach me to do thy will, for thou art my God. Psalm 144, happy is the people whose God 
is the Lord. May I help you tonight? How do I find my place? Number one, there must be a desire. If you have no desire to serve God, you have no desire to honor God, you have no desire to obey God, forget finding God's place for you. You're already there. What you need to do is get saved. What you need is come to Calvary. Have your sins washed. Let God give you a new life, a new outlook, a new desire for me to find God's place. Sitting in my room, my house, with no place to preach. Um, didn't know what I was going to do. And my wife said, well, why don't you just preach here? And I preached there. And I preached there again. And I preached there again. We'll put a sign out on the highway. Come here, Gene Wolfenbarger, Joshua Baptist Church. And I preached again, and I preached again, and folks started coming. And I preached again, and folks started coming. And I had a desire to win people to Christ, see people change. And God had a place. I had a desire. Do you have a desire? to find your place. It may be a Sunday school class. Some of you folks that sing specials, you ought to sing in the choir. You say, why? Because you just ought to do it. You say, why don't you sing in the choir? I tried to, Sean kicked me out. <laughs> Secondly, to find your place, you gotta be willing to serve where God wants you to serve, not where you want to serve. Amen. Find a hole and fill it. Find a chair and sit in it. I first got saved. I didn't know God wanted me to do anything, but somebody said, there's a chair and a choir open. I said, can I sit in it? Yeah. I said, okay. I started singing. The choir director said, Gene, just move your mouth. Don't let anything come out. I said, that's okay. And I did that. You said, you should have got mad and got out of the choir. No, sir. Choir looked fuller with me up there. Fifth grade boys class got open. I said, I'll teach it. Somebody said, there's a bus route open. I'll be the captain. Find a hole. Be willing. Have a desire to be in your place when Jesus comes. Have a desire. Be willing. And there must be a need. Now, if you think we're going to pay for your bus license so you can drive a truck, you fell out of your mosquito tree. Brother Sean got kind of mixed up. We're not giving you lessons on how to get a CDL license to go drive a water truck for some oil field company. So if that's why you're getting licensed around here, teach yourself. We need bus drivers. We need people who will love kids. We need folks who won't cop out when it gets wet. We need folks who will drive buses. And so we're going to teach you and buy you license. But if you use them to do anything, <laughs> make sure you tithe on it if you do. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. You say, now, who made that rule? No, Sean. <laughs> and when you find your place, it'll always be a blessing to others not just to you, but to others. Do you realize what it does to me when I see you in church? Do you realize how it encourages me? And at my age, as much as I hurt, I need constant encouragement. So would you just keep on keeping on being in your place, doing what God wants you to do? You gotta have a desire. You gotta have a need, and you gotta be willing to do it and it's got to be a blessing to others. And there will be fulfillment and reward beyond your wildest imagination. I would not trade what God has allowed me to enjoy these 50 years for all the money that is in the world. 
I wouldn't even trade places with Trump. I wouldn't trade places with him. I'd rather be shocked to trade places with him. Somebody's watching you. You're the only Bible somebody's reading. Don't wonder from your place. Amen. Amen. Find your place now. And I am so, so humbled that God allowed me to have the place that I've had over these years. Because I needed a place Help me raise my kids. I needed a place that would love my wife. We looked for churches before I started this one. And all the churches my wife visited, not one of them would welcome my wife. Yet I married her. Not one. In fact, one church, when they were leaving the church, I think this is right, the preacher took my wife's hand and shook her hand and said, Ms. Wolfenbarger, you do know there's other churches in town you can visit. Well, you know what? There is a church in town now that anybody can visit. That anybody, red, yellow, black, and white, makes no difference. They can visit. They can fill it home. There is a church in town now that welcomes little bus kids. There is a church in town now who believes there is a place and that is God's place. So please be careful. 